Well, let's start with the challenger since I know you. This is Mr. Kron Henderson. How you doing? What's going on? What's going on? How you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Now, you've raved over. This is supposed to be the great blizzard of 2024. <laughs> but we didn't see a lot of action outside. Maybe we're going to see some action inside. Hopefully. Talk to me about your plans right now. Plan is to get real loud and get louder. And, and I see you got a couple of friends over there that's going to help you get loud. Real loud. Real loud. All right, so as I said, I am not going to do the interview because someone came over here and traveled a little bit. This is from the UBA Today, the bad twin, Andre Welbon. Andre, I'm going to give you the mic. Camera's over there. So I'm going to move. You're going to go over here. Let's have fun. Oh, so namesake. How you doing, my guy? How you feeling? I know so, we came up here to do business. We did work, right? The hey, man, oh. how you feel on your first defense? It's another match. Can't put too much into it. You just got to show up and bowl. That is Andre Wilbon's first taste behind the interview microphone. He is hoping that it will not be his last taste on the microphone because he's hoping that his, his uh, shall we say, I can't really say your teammate because you're not on DC Mafia. I will say your, your conference teammate, your divisional teammate. What, what exactly is he? He's a conference teammate, you know, and he's just my namesake. You know, Andre's got to stick together. All of us Andre's got to stick together. And I'm just hoping he comes out here, gets rid of the nerves early. Karan is a tough competitor, so I'm expecting fireworks. Yeah, this is going to be a fun match. Um, I happen to know Karan personally. I've seen him bowl. He's really good, and he's very good at Bowler City. And here we go. First strike here from Karan Henderson. And we're going to be hearing a lot of that during the match. Obviously, Karan's going to want to hear that much more than much less. Before I chat this, send this over to, to Shondai, let me chat a little bit about the format. This is the best of seven. Whoever wins four games first will win the match. In this case, it's for the Northeast Cruiserweight title. So whoever wins shall be walking off with it. Andre up first. Andre leaves a 6-10. Now, Shondai, you, let's just say you're Andre Harrison. Okay. Because I've gotten Andre over here. So let's talk about the other Andre momentarily. Mm -hmm. You already know that you've traveled, oh, I don't know, a couple of hours. You may be a little bit tired. Once or twice. Hopefully you spent <laughs> the time over the hotel. But let's just say that you haven't. You came up here at 4 o'clock in the morning like the insane people that both Andres are. What is your game plan in terms of how to get through this? Well, um, key one, close frames, just like Andre just did on his first frame right there. Um, coming into a new territory or it may not be necessarily new. You want to basically come with a good mix of stuff. You want to come with the right stuff, you know, something that'll react light, something that'll react heavy, something that'll react in the middle. Get a feel. Uh, marathon, not a sprint. First person to four is to win. And, you know, it's, you're getting a feel. First game definitely sets a good pace. You want to be the first one to win, but you know you already know 1-0 is not out the door, but you never want to get in a situation where you're swimming in deep waters and then it gets a little high and the pressure gets there. And no pressure on that second frame for Andre Harrison. Looks like he made a very quick adjustment on that, at least mentally, because that he threw that shot differently in frame two than he did frame one. So now, Andre, knowing what he said in terms of the proper equipment, I will not use that word. I'm not going to go after the low, the uh, low-hanging fruit, at least not this early he, in the morning, I mean, maybe he, later he, in the he, afternoon. You already said, you know, hopefully you get a, he gets another taste of the mic. <laughs> but we're, we're going to ignore that, but we're not going to yeah, ignore, ignore that. the <gasps> second strike starting out. Um, looking for a, has a perfect start. Hopefully it'll be a perfect finish for Karan Henderson right now. All right, so now let's talk over here. Based on what Shondai said about the equipment, what stuff does Andre Harrison have in his bag of tricks that he brought over to the party? Well, the idea for Andre Harrison is always to keep it simple. That's the rule. Keep it simple, stupid. Keep the lanes in front of you, especially in a new house that you may not be comfortable with. You want to control the pocket, make easy spares, and then as you get loose, woo, pause then you start to move in and start to play your a game right now he's starting off with the summit which is a very uh nice controllable strong sim and it's going to keep him around the pocket and keep us in the game and that's the goal well we're talking about a bunch of stuff they want to talk about that and that in this case is a front three from karan henderson now if i'm andre harrison andre and andre I better, that third frame better be a strike or else I am in danger of getting thrown, blown out of the building in game one. Well, as Shondite said, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. You know, a lot of people can finish fast, but she likes you to finish long. So we're trying to go strong and hard and repeatedly. So that's where we at. 
<laughs> in the morning time. Think about the children <laughs> in the morning. I you think they got here. Well, how do you? Well, I know definitely how that. I know how that. I know how that shot got there. A uh, uh, very good early surface change. He um, looked to see um, what the first piece was going to do. That may be a, a foresight piece. He may see something that after the carry down for something that'll flip a little more. Right now he's going with like Andre said, pocket control. You know, hope go for the pocket. Hope for the carry. It's already game one, the beginning of game one, and I think there may need to be a PG-13 label warning on this match already. This, this would be, I know our feeds go to Worldstar. This, this may be one of those matches that Worldstar will have a field day with. Y'all forgot who you asked to commentate, so, you know. Oh, no, I didn't forget at all. I was going to say, we're, we're having fun. Andre oh, is known as the bad point as a reason. Oh, that's high, and he's going to pay for it, 4-9. Well, Super Bowl season, and the 49ers just showed up on lane three. 4-9 split. Let's just see if we can convert this. Spare conversion will definitely um, send a message that he's still here. And even if he so happens to lose game one, he would still be here. But that's mentally, like you want to stay here. Yes, that's more like the minor 49er, which is a villain on Scooby-Doo, because that's a very villainous leave. Yeah, I can I can out pun you any day of the week, sir. Uh, you are you are the white Chris Rios. You are a big pun. There you go. Well, he, he made one. You know. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna chat here a little bit. Now you're just telling him to stay with it. What do you think that last shot was? Because it it looked like that ball scored it out. Definitely did not look like that's where he wanted to put the ball. Well, yeah, he got it to the right a little too early, and friction is not forgiving out here. So you got to put the the ball in the right place. You know, on the lanes, especially as you're going to see some transition now, even just being new to this area, they fly on the back ends, as you see right there with a Karan. So you don't want to get the ball too early to the right. You want to sort of uh, play it tight and fit it in a very narrow space until the lanes start to open up. Yeah, just, just having a little bit of ego for my end, a little bit of ego, because I have won a bunch of league titles here, ego, ego. Uh, <laughs> for me, as a lefty, down it is a shot. I mean, obviously, you can throw it out all day, but you're going to wind up doing that. So, Karan and, Karan and Andre, both with opens in the fourth frame, uh, both, both athletes having a chance to blow each other out. At the beginning, neither of them are doing that right now. It's a nine-pin game. Karan looking to get back on the strike train. It's not going to do it. Mm. The other thing that you got to notice here is pacing. So yes. while I'm watching this, Andre seems to have a better pace. He's not rushing to the line. And so we got to see if Karan decides to slow down. He tried to really get up and start throwing another ball after he missed on the spare. So I would advise to take a little time and find your bearings. So we'll see how the match goes from here. It's second half at this point. Yeah, he's like strong, strong, a little bit too strong. Uh, yeah, I've, it, it's almost to me, and obviously I'm not on the lanes right now trying to figure this out, but when they're throwing the ball down and in, no problem strikes. They're both squirting it out, and it looks like they want to make the change to squirting it out, and I don't think that's the right move here. Shandai, what do you think about that? Well, definitely what I thought, what I saw there was um, Karan saw an opportunity. He got a, not necessarily overzealous, but maybe lost some of that aggression. Tried, tried to, to fold it out. He thought it was easy rolling, and he got it out too early. Oh, and whoa, my look at that! And when you, when a when a bucket drops, when a bucket <laughs> drops, you know, the cold wind blows and it just blew over the whole bucket right there. M and must have been that snow blizzard that we didn't get yesterday. Yeah, that we did not. But you know, we're going to knock on wood on that because if we get snow, I'm blaming the dark clouds. And to point to what you mentioned before about the whole down and in situation, myself being in Boulder City, not always having the best experiences here, looking to fix that, but neither here nor there. Down and in. Down and <laughs> down in. Down and, down and down in definitely and works, in. but if you lose a little speed or if you drop your shoulder and get it out a little early, the friction right here, the friction, it, it's frictioning. And then the oil is definitely holding right there in the middle. There's definitely a, a, a pool, a pool of oil in the middle. Which There's creates an in. opportunity There's a for you to spread the oil out right there. Great shot right there. Stayed aggressive. I'm telling you, from I've, I, I've got the hardware to prove it. I'm telling you, it works. You're a lefty. They don't count. What's wrong about <laughs> being a lefty? What is this lefty bias? Uh, uh, being a lefty is not all right. <laughs> <laughs> It's shout all right to going to the left. Yeah, <laughs> shout out to everybody. By, by the way, between the three of us, we have enough puns for days. 
and oh, no FedEx. No carry for days there. And then right there, exactly, no FedEx. The messenger did not deliver the message, but better late than never. Second shot, looking to convert and spare. He does not want to have two opens. Both, both um, competitors did blink in the fourth frame. We do not want to see any more blinking if they want to have a chance to walk out of here with some hardware. Yeah, Harrison right now up by a little bit in game one. Uh -oh. And there Low goes bridge. that shoulder drop. Yeah, get, get rid of that spare. That spare don't count. Or actually, I'll get rid of it here. Have a mic. So, Andre, we noticed right there um, two times we noticed that Karan dropped his shoulder and got the ball out way too early. Um, what do you feel is happening? Well, I feel right now it's like um, as someone coming in trying to take the championship belt, you know, you feel a little pressure. You feel a little pressure for perfection. And he's got people in the crowd that's mm -hmm. supporting him. You know, you don't want to have a mess up. So True. you feel a little clinch. You tighten up. And mm -hmm. you miss easy spares that you normally convert. So now we're going to see if Andre, my namesake, can capitalize on it and really submit, put his stamp on this first game of the match, which is a crucial first game. It's not the game, but it's one that you want to take away with when your opponent gives you a few openings. Yeah, this is what we call the statement game. Uh, first game, you definitely want to get into the opponent's head a little bit, let them know, hey, I'm here. Um, potentially, I want to make you feel like you don't have a shot. Uh, if but, he keeps throwing it like that, Karan is not going to have a shot to get back into this one. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Harrison right now up by 13, looking to keep it that way and guarantee that he'll have the lead going into the eighth frame. If Karan Henderson goes out the door, it's a 233. Uh, if Andre Harrison goes out the door, if my math is correct, that's a 256. And Andre is nodding his head up and down, so therefore, I will hope that that means I'm right. Yeah, absolutely correct, Gordon. And like I said, this is, well, as Sean Dyke said, it's a statement game. As the champ, you want to get out to an early lead and keep your foot on the back of your opponent's neck. So we'll see if he can continue to throw good shots. Right yep. now, we're going to see who has the foot on the neck. Will it be a New Balance or will it be a Timberland? There's down and in again. A little bit. Oh, another spill. The second one for Andre Harrison. I'm sure he's not going to complain about that too much. Nope. Andre, you're not going to complain about that, right? Yeah, yeah, they all fell. Yeah, ugly ones need love, too. Child's fingerprint. Child's painting sometimes goes off for $2 million at Sotheby's. And the thing is, is, with shots like that, it's also beneficial to you, but it demoralizes your opponent. Yeah. So, And you can even tell the look on Karan's face when he threw that first shot, especially when he left the bucket over there in the lead. Now Excuse he's throwing it a little bit light. Excuse me, sir. Got a bucket. A bucket of what is the question. However, even if he makes a spare, he's going to need a lot of help from Mr. Harrison in order to get back into this one. He will need the spare. But now it went from 233 to 213. And if my math is correct, any mark in the ninth or 10th frame will do it. And the champ will take game one. Yeah, the, it, it's looking good for the champ to take game one, but he cannot rest on his laurels. You know, it's, it's a four-game match. you got to win four. Just one is not enough. So he's got to keep lined up and start to look for transition because it's happening out there. Yeah, they, it can easily, I mean, you expect transition here at Buller City. Buller City is known for you cannot stay in the same spot all four games. You're going to have to, it will transition, you're going to have to move. So the question is going to be who can figure that out first, and that's going to be who wins this match. No, so, Shonda, going back in, uh, you are Karan. You've now seen him throw nine frames. What adjustments does he need to make in game two? Everything's right except for his feet. Right now, his hands are chasing his feet speed. Foot speed is right there showing his exuberance. Right now, he might be overly exuberant. He needs to come back, mm -hmm. take a step back, breathe a little bit, not let the energy overtake the situation so that way you can control the situation. That, that's a really, really good point. You know, this, this is his first time here in the big time, and you saw a little bit of that exuberance coming into play. He started off great, first three, and then when he stopped striking, and then two out of the next three frames, he also stopped sparing. So he can't do that. Hey, Gordon, is, as I mentioned earlier, it's about pacing. Remember when I yes. said that he was uh, so fast on his approach after he opened in the fourth, I was concerned that that may continue on, and now his speed and his feet are a little faster than his arm swing, so he's out in front, and he's missing a little to the right, which is causing the ball to overreact. Mm. The champ has good pacing right now, so that's why he's controlling the match right now. 
He also didn't let him. He did. He didn't let the beginning phase him. He didn't let the open phase him. So he's going. Say, nice little pace going on. Strike off 235. That will be more than enough to cover the right now 202 that Kron has. Theoretically, the game's over as long as a big rhinoceros doesn't break through the wall of Buller City and Gorm and take him all the way down to lane 11 and 12. Well, as the champ, I would also get a look at another piece right now as well. Since I've got the match in lock, I would try to get another look. But that was a great shot right there. Yeah. Or, or maybe he doesn't want to throw another piece just because, as you just said, great shot right there. Well, it's always good to know your arsenal and what it's going to do as we transition. Again, it's a four-game match. you got to win four. You're not going to be able true. to stay in the same piece. That, that is also true. So I would want to get a look. Once I, it's locked up, let me see what other piece is going to do, and then go back and throw another shot. I like the advice. Now the question is, is Andre taking it? No. 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 <laughs> And right now, again, this game is over. The only thing we're looking for right now is that the final numbers are. On Andre is trying to talk to the other Andre at this moment. The other Andre has said, we're not chatting. Mr. Harrison, your buddy over here wants, wants to chat with you. Well, while we're um, taking the time for a little side coaching session, I want to let everybody know that these two teams more than likely will be in, Del in the Delaware area early February, February 4th to be exact. Unholy Alliance is upon us. Uh, yeah, we're, we're going to be all over Unholy Alliance. That's going to be a lot of fun. Meanwhile, <laughs> Karan Henderson will finish with a 190. All right, so Karan, talk to me a little bit here as we're waiting for Andre to finish up. Just came out really strong first game in the first three frames, and then... I mean, if you look at all my UBA things, I then came back 0-4, back for everybody the last two matches, so you know. This is regular schedule programming for me. So we'll see what's going on. I don't think he's ever won a game one yet, so he may not have been here before. <laughs> All right. We, sh we shall see what happens. At the end of game one, Karana Henderson, 190, which is 44 pins behind Andre Harrison with his 234. The champ leads one game to nil. Math. Math. <laughs> math is math. Math is math. And let's see. You've got to remember that. <laughs> Absolutely. No, um, but you got to remember, it's not total pins. It's game by game. So 44-point win on game one means nothing. nothing. Absolutely nothing. So, so you got to go back and get, you got to get three more. That's true. Let's put it this way. If Karan wins the next four games by a total of five pins, we have a new Cruiserweight champion, regardless of the one. No. That's what we're saying. What what has got nothing to do with this? Pause. Even though I'm sort of curious, while we're here in this dead space, I'm sort of curious as to what the nickname on the back of the jersey means for Mr. Andre Harrison, because it's not gardening season and he's looking for his host. Well, uh, if you didn't know, my namesake is actually a fireman. So, uh -huh. whereas my host refers to his fire hose. Aha. Uh -huh. So he's looking to extinguish Karan Henderson's fire, so to speak, after game one. And ooh, well, everybody can spill. Andre had two in game one. This is Karan's first in game two. There you go. Got went, went a little higher. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, definitely uh, went to something a little softer so that way he could slow down, get through the pocket. He definitely got, got a graceful carry there. I think it was a wise surface choice. You know, sometimes you got to look at your different surfaces, just like Andre said, see what you got in your arsenal, see what your arsenal does. Almost a light carry mix, doesn't get it four pin. I just so, think he's playing a little too far left. Mm -hmm. I would try to move my feet a little right and give me more. Down and in, Maybe. down and in, down and in. Yeah, at, the lanes have not opened up just quite enough for him to get the shape that he's looking for to trick those four. He's got away with it a couple of times on lane four. That, that, that lane is transitioning a little earlier than three. But, you know, I think that Andre just has a better look right now. He's playing a part of the lane that's going to give him more forgiveness and be able to control the pocket, and that's the name of the game. Control the pocket, make spares, and strike when you can. Well, I'm going to be intrigued by this shot because you did tell him to change his equipment, which, of course, he did not listen to. Now, is he going to regret that here in the second in the second frame? 
Well, we'll I, find out. Well, I asked him to take a look to see what the absolute is going to do on lane three. I didn't want him to change his equipment. I just wanted to see what the ball would do in transition so you can get ahead of the curve so you're never behind chasing it. <laughs> Absolutely. You, you, you always want to be one frame too early than one frame too late. Mm -hmm. All right, going into the third frame, Harrison has once again taken a lead on Karan Henderson. At this time, it took him two frames earlier to do it. And I'm noticing contrasting angles between Karan and Andre. Mm -hmm. So Karan, a little more loopy. Same equipment for for Andre right now. Uh, Andre is taking down a different and in. Yes. Down and in. And down not necessarily. And in. I mean, he's going down and in, but he's going within the oil. So that way, he's controlling the pocket. He basically knows that Karan has potential for an erratic reaction. But as you see right there, staying anywhere. That's either outside or slightly inside of 10, but right now he's focused on staying on 10 to hopefully get 10 in each shot. Yeah, beautiful shot right there. Leaves nine. Andre right now. I, I still think it's a little bit too early of a ball change. However, as you said, this may be the time that he may want to make a little bit of a look. I would a different piece like, of equipment? Yeah, I would like to see just a slight adjustment, even move his feet, slow the ball down a little bit, and give it a little more chance to shape the lane on lane three. Again, I think lane three is playing a lot tighter than lane four, based mm -hmm. on my eyes. But the champ sees what the champ sees. He's up 1-0 in the match, so his judgment is his judgment, and that's what's got him here. Step 1-0 in the match, up by a quick nine pins over Karan Henderson. Obviously, a double from Karan. He will either tie the match up or take the lead in the game. Mm -hmm. This is an interesting view, but I feel based on the contrasting angles and based on what Andre is pushing down versus where Karan is playing, we may see a paradigm shift. This could go to game seven, and it all depends on if the level of confidence goes, goes up. Well, Karan's going to want that paradigm shift a little bit sooner than later because that's not the gapper that he was looking for. He'll take two, but all of a sudden there's the first open in this game. And he's now staring at a 23-pin deficit. Yeah, again, it's like I said, I just think he's, his angles are too wide right now. And it just doesn't give him much misroom on any sort of shot. So he's got to be a little too accurate on lane four. And that's the mess point. So if he gives himself more of a margin of error, I think he wouldn't get a lot of those errant throws that he's been throwing. And that's when we talked about it, Andre Harris and I, when we came up, it was like, we want to keep the lanes in front of us, leave easy marks, make our spares, and take our strikes when we get them. And that's how you win matches. Well, that was a much better shot for Henderson on frame four. And I'm not sure if you heard him when he came off the lane, but he said, that's where I need to put the ball. Then he went, ah, after that. Forget the ah, after that. Uh, ooh, mm. got out of trouble there. Only leaves a six pin. Probably should have left some other, cl other uh, pins up there along with it. But if Karan realizes and puts that same shot on lane four that he just did on lane three. We've mm -hmm. got ourselves, we're gonna have ourselves a little boxing match here. Yeah, right there, um, very merciful to only have left the six pin, went very high, but because playing in the oil, got, that's why he got the merciful carry. He's playing in an area that has a lot of hold, but now he has to hold his position. He's gotta hold his feet right, hold, hold the legs right, make sure the shoulders are, are, are square, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the things that look good on paper, but when you're on the lanes and when you're back here, it's always a different feel. We have a different perspective. We're outside of the window. They're inside putting in work. Well, then here's the other question. And, and again, you're, you're Andre Harrison. You have 23 or 13 pin lead, depending on whether or not Karan doubles. Now, and you know that Karan is struggling to throw the ball out there. Do you throw a shot mm -hmm. to sort of splash the oil a little bit and give Karan a little bit more to think about up there? Mm -hmm. Well... Uh, my opinion right now, now that he has a not, a not a considerably high lead, I say I would slow myself down, make him wait, make him think about it a little bit, mm -hmm. make him watch, rather yeah. than just try to sprint during the marathon. That like we saw Karan trying to sprint during the marathon, and you got tripped up. You he, know, ran, he ran into a hurdle. Yeah, exactly. You know how the Jersey and slash New York streets are. You gonna find some cracks if you Pot keep holes. if you keep moving Nothing fast, and yeah. you don't see where you're stepping. And he stepped in something, and he, he, he slipped up. He blew a tire. Yes. Yeah, oh yeah, he blew a tire right there. Definitely good year. And like I like I said, it's I firmly agree in pacing, and so you know. You don't, there's no shot clock right now. So you can take your time, you can make good shots, 
and the longer your opponent has to wait for a turn, you know, it's a little game and shit. Make them think about it. Make them rush, make them tight, <coughs> make them squeeze, you know? Indeed. By the way, with the halfway mark of game two, I am Gordon Pepper. To the right of me is former cruiserweight champion, maybe soon to be cruiserweight champion as he's staring again. Uh, Sean Knight face on. And to the left of me from the UBA today, the bad twin, Andre Walbon. And all of us are watching a pretty fun cruiserweight matchup. The champion, Andre Harrison, has taken game one. He is leading game two. Karan Henderson had a chance to cut into the lead and tie. He has not done that. He's left almost a bucket. Well, Two po pens. pointing out um, something that Andre mentioned about. Um, sorry about Ooh, that. makes a spare. Um, pointing out what he mentioned about Karan and how he plays left. Been around him for a while now. He likes to play left. The one thing about playing left, he has a lot more room to move on lane three. That's why he's a lot more comfortable in lane three. He's pushing it instinctually pushing it more on lane four because you have the ball return being right there. So not enough room to spread. As you see right there, he gets to stay and finish. Yep. And to my point, yep. more room to spread his wings so he flies free on lane three. But lane four, he needs to move more to the right. Maybe he gets centered, center those angles. He needs to find different angles. Whenever you don't have the ball returning your way, bowlers know this, especially if you're a right-handed bowler, you definitely have more room to finish, more room to stay. Yeah, now Karan's figured, to your point, Karan's figured out lane three. If he figures out lane four, that 20-pin lead may not be enough for Andre Harrison, and he may have to start throwing strikes again. Right now, he's working on a spare. Henderson working on a strike, going into his half of the sixth frame, second half of game five. Here's that ball's coming. Ooh, that's a different line that he used and didn't really work. 2-5. Actually, we got, is that a seven? Yeah, it is a seven, so we got a 2 five, eight. We got an eight hiding behind that, too. Yeah, the issue when I talked to Yeah, what were you chatting with him so, about? So I was chatting with my namesake about his... Namesake. Yes, yes, with um, the, the way he uh, speeds the line. Mm -hmm. Again, pacing is a very big thing for us, and that's what we talked about. I want to see him slow his feet down and keep his ball speed under 16. If he keeps it under 16, it allows it to shape. So even if you're missing the oil, you know it's going to hold. But if you miss to the right, it'll give it enough time to recover. So right there, you saw he slowed his ball speed down. He just missed a lot to the right. So we're hoping to correct that. I see. Let's see if he can correct himself on the spare. That looks good. It is. Yeah, I definitely see Andre carving a path for himself. And even though a bad result, on that shot, the reaction right there is telling, and it actually gives him permission to move a little more right as he carves a path and spreads a little of that, that good old slick stuff, that oil around. And with the line that he's playing, carving that path through around the middle of the lane, it gives you, it gives you space to not have to work so hard in the later games. Well, that's all well and good except, and I say except here because Andre had a 23-pin lead. It is now a 17-pin lead. Yes. What that also means is that instead of forcing Karan to throw strikes, one open by Andre, and Karan can get right back into it and or take the lead. He's going back to his old faithful right there. That's light. That's good. Andre Harrison, a much-needed strike in the seventh frame. That, that will guarantee that he keeps the lead. However, a double here by Karan Henderson, and that lead will be in single digits. If you were watching what Andre Harrison just said, he said speed and balance. Again, it goes back to what we were talking about. You want to be in that swisher zone, and that's where Karan is. Mm -hmm. He's in that swisher zone where you got a little half board miss to the right, and you're going to be flush. Half board miss to the left, and you're still flush. You want to build a zone or a ramp that you can continuously carry and meet the pocket. You don't want to be fast with your feet, and you don't want to overthrow as you get a radical reaction. Right now, it's a seven-pin lead for Henderson. If you uh, got very Harrison, wide. I was going to say, wide. if Henderson threw a strike here, then Andre's got to throw another one. And in this case, that did not happen. Yeah, that was a case of wanting it too much. Yeah, Kron very vociferous about his disapproval on that shot. Indeed. But what I'm noticing is that Karan is definitely getting a lot more comfortable. He's making a lot better shots. So this yes, is about he to is. be a tough match. This is about to get interesting at this point. Let's put it this way. And I'll say this right now, if Andre does not throw a strike here, this will go down to the 10th frame. And if he throws an open here, he could be in trouble because it definitely looks like Karan, especially 
on lane four. He found something that he didn't find the whole entire game, and you can argue he didn't find it in game one either. This could be the first time that he finds something. Starting to be a little bit of pressure over here on Andre Harrison. Yeah, and if you notice, he switched to the outer limits, which gives him a lot more control on the back end. So it was a great ball adjustment for him. Great choice. All right, we'll see how great it is. Big shot here, eighth frame. Can he double up? Yes, he can. Well, ten pin goes down. A huge shot. Except yeah. the ninth frame, arguably, is even bigger because another strike here, not only can Karan not shut him out in the ninth and tenth frame, but it gives Andre a little work that he needs to get done in the tenth, assuming, of course, that he keeps on the lane. And assuming that Karan doesn't strike in the ninth and tenth frames to force him to do something. That foundation however, frame. and a big however here, if he opens, Karan will have enough leverage to strike out, steal this game, and tie up one game apiece. Taking his time, staring down the target. Let's see what Andre does here on lane three. Gets it up the lane. Shot here. Big shot. Big produce. Yeah, really big took results. his time on that. Yeah, huge production on that shot. Good shot As Andre says, good shot, namesake. Karan Henderson can go out the door for a 215. And we're looking at a 243. So if Karan goes out the door, Andre still has some work ahead of him. He still needs a mark. Anything less than that, and it's two zip. So Karan's got to have this one. Oh, he does. Nipen almost stood up. FedEx came in. That's right. Messenger headed down. I'm going to say it again. That was say it again. phenomenal ball change by Corona. Phenomenal yes. ball change. Agreed. Great ball change. Also, nice different shot. And that Third one he said. here, again, same issue for Corona. He's got to have this one. Let's see if he doesn't make the same mistake he did before on this lane. He hits his target. That, oh, that should be all. Right there. Oh. No, too light. Game's over. If you'd have noticed that he did not stick with the outer limits, he's going with the Katana. I want to say on one lane in the radical outer limits on lane four, I would like to have seen him to go with the outer limits on lane three. I think it gives him a more control of the pocket and back in, but he paid for it, the decision, and he's going to be down to nothing. Well, he's got a chance here for one more shot. As you've said, this is the, the time that you would put out a new piece. Probably needs to have a little bit more speed on that. So Kron's going to finish with a 193. He's, he's giving me that look of, yeah, I know Gordon, shut up. I get that look a lot. You notice that? I get that look a Ooh, lot, you? especially at the end of games. You. Well, speaking of the look, Andre definitely has the look. He's yeah, sticking I, with the plan, and right now the plan is, is panning out so far so good in games one and game two. Sure is. That's a really nice plan. If you keep doing that, you stay with the plan. Okay, I ask the same question, Andre. Keep the shot. Try to get a different look, look at some new bowling equipment, try to take a selfie. What do you think you'd like to do? Actually, I would like him to keep the summit. The summit is giving him the best look on lane four. Lane three was the trickier of the pair, I believe. So that was why I suggested to get a look at the absolute. And it looks like he's going to take the absolute and get a look on lane four. But I think the summit is the ball to go to. He didn't have to move his feet much. So now you and your namesake were chatting. I see Sean Knight behind me chatting with Karan, even though it's not his namesake, but they may be chatting a little bit of strategy. That is a great shot and a great look. I mean, strategy, we all want everyone to do well, right? So we want the best match we want. You want everyone to do well. Now, me personally, I want game seven. That's what I want. I think, we all, I think that's what we you all want. You want everyone to do well, but with your namesake, I think you want Karan to be in second place. You don't want him taking first. You want him taking second. Absolutely. I mean, it's a long drive home. If we can get on the road quickly, I would prefer that. But, you know, <laughs> I want both of them wow. to make it a competitive match. So you, you want to get out of here quickly, maybe hit a casino on the way back. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's something that he didn't necessarily like, but it doesn't matter. At the end of game two, another 40-plus win for Andre Harrison. 239-193, the champ up to zip. So, Andre, I pose this question to you. Keys to come back, keys to a walk down. What do you feel needs to happen for We're not at walk down mode yet. 
Oh yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, you're right. I wouldn't know. I've. I've well, are you, are you predicting something that's going to happen in Game Three? Well, like I said, I see that, the. That, long, that was your I boy that you were talking to, and you were giving him good looks, and now you're saying that he's got to come back from a lockdown. Well, you, I, you may have made him angry. Well, you know. Well, maybe I should have told him a uh, side bit. <laughs> well, to answer your question, uh, Shonda, keys are just focus on one frame at a time. You can't get all ten frames in one ball. So you got to throw a good shot every time and just stay focused and apply pressure. That's the name of the game. Apply pressure with every frame, every ball that you throw and stick to your game plan. And you got to trust yourself. That what got you here in the first place, right? Exactly. Trust. It's all about trust. You, you, have, you pack the stuff in the bag. You got to be able to trust what you got in the bag. Exactly. There's no point of going to the bag if you don't trust what's in it. Yeah, it's not like you can change surfaces out here. <laughs> Well, speaking of which, we definitely saw service change. And can you tell us a little bit about the service that Andre just changed to? Okay, so he switched to the absolute, which we wanted to get a look on lane three to see as transition starts to fall in. It's a strong, it's a stronger ASIM, but it's a cleaner cover. So it gets down lane a little bit better, and it retains its energy for more shape. So as Karan sort of opened up the lanes with the outer limits, which is a little surface fort, it gives um, Andre more room for error mm -hmm. and it allows him to clean the fronts because he wants to stay as straight as possible as long as possible. And I think this ball gives him a better look. Great combination of um, power as well as predictability. Right now, nothing but strikes game three. Nothing but strikes game three. Another Absolute one. And, and this, this may be... So Now, we already discussed this at the end of game two. This game may be... Who's the first person that blinks? Because right now, both bowlers seem to be lined on both lanes. Right, right now, Karan's taking his time a little more, look like his feet are a little more relaxed. And mm. that ball aggressively took a turn. It did, not for the better. 3 6 10 up there. Right now, the, he got everybody fired up at the beginning of game one. I'm sure they're waiting for something to be fired up about. Didn't happen game two, may not happen game three. And, and then we will be talking about how to get to, ooh. Well, that's gonna be one step closer to how to deal with the walk down. Mm. Well, you know what? I blame you. I blame Sean Dyke for this. It, for, first of hey, all, it's hey, dark cloud. I, I'm, I'm, I'm just a cloud. <laughs> we ain't getting, we ain't getting Sean nobody Sean Dyke is a fluffy cloud at this moment. We don't know. If it's a light cloud or a dark cloud or a thunderstorm cloud or a snow cloud, still haven't had that blizzard yet that we were waiting on this weekend. We haven't seen any of that. Maybe use a blizzard cloud. Well, I know um, Karan doesn't want to see any clouds. He wants to see some sunshine. But right now, there's no sunshine when, you, no, when no your frames are gone. No sunshine on lane two. No. <laughs> Ain't no sunshine two, no. when the frames are gone. Nope. And the second frame is gone. He's Ain't down. Ain't no sunshine when the frame's gone. That's yes, right. Well, I'm sorry for that. Well, hopefully a third strike is on the way for Andre. Well, right now, he, yeah, I was going to say Andre wants that third strike. Yeah, absolutely. As he rolls with the absolute, going up the boards, and as Gordon was chanting down and in, and down, down and, and in, in could potentially down be good in. for a win. Down and in. It's a great game plan. It basically um, keeps it simple. And we all know the rule of kiss. Keep it simple, silly. Yes. E even though we'll use other words for the yes. Yes, a phrase to live by. I've used that silly, especially when I yell at myself yeah. over it being used for something uh, a little bit more blue. Something closer to the coloring. How much on lanes three and four? Mm -hmm, indeed. Situation looking bleak. Usually it's a compound word, the second part of that word being head. Keep it silly, blank head. And that's what I will use. But silly is good. Keep it simple, silly head. That's, that's you good. You said PG-13 and you mentioned the head on a Saturday morning. What are you doing? But way too late on that. We, we, we violated that in, in game one. And he violated the pocket right there in frame Pac's four. Violated. And the goal that we had was always to get to the absolute. By somewhere or somehow, we always wanted to get to the absolute. It's one of his favorite balls in his mm -hmm. bag. So now we're seeing the results. He's enjoying the results. Karan Henderson, not so much. And I'm going to say this, Karan Anderson almost needs a strike here in the fourth frame, or this one's going to get away from him very early. He gets the strike. Big strike from Henderson. Needed that one. Or else this game would have been in absolute peril. It still could be, because, again, for him to get back into this, 
Andre has to do something that he has not done in the first four frames, and that's to put an X on the board. Fifth frame here coming up. Anderson right now in a double. Here's a shot. That ball looks good. And it is looks three good. in a row for Henderson. He might be trying to do a, a drop your low frame situation. <laughs> He's trying to cancel out that second frame. Yeah, he may ask me, can we make a WCS rule? You don't have to use that second frame if you don't want to. <laughs> hey, anything is possible in UBA. We pioneer a lot. <laughs> we do. Drop yeah. your low frame. We should pioneer that. Next, copyrights coming up next. Yeah. <laughs> We, we have a patent pending uh, call in to the Washington, D.C. office, right which now. is where Andre Harrison is right now. Oh, we got four in a row. And let's see if this is five. And, oh, yeah, scud missile right there, going right for the pocket. Front five, we're going into the second half of game three. I'm Gordon. Sean Dice on my right. Andre on my left. Strikes are in front of us. And unfortunately, so is a 7-1 by Karan Henderson. And right now, that is a difference in this game. Yeah, that certainly wasn't a great eight. But he's trying to maybe potentially go back back 10. <laughs> back 10 versus uh, well, potential back 12 in a row. Well, back 10 266. And, and uh, Andre's been winning games by 30-plus. And if that continues, then there's going to be a three, all right. And that's going to be the first number of that digit that mm -hmm. he's had. With a dash and an O at the end. Six frame here, looking for six in a row. Oh, that's high, three, six, ten. That one was Gordon's fault. That was Gordon. Now the split. That's, now here's what's interesting about this. Should he open, gets Kron Henderson right back into this one. Now should he mark, obviously Andre will still have the lead. Indeed. You know, spares are all It's not insurmountable now. Spares are makeable yet missable. <laughs> that is true. Come on, looking for, for a replay of what he did, but he doesn't get that. Andre Harrison does make the spare. Well, three. Uh -huh. And again, dif difference of the game right now, Andre made his spare, Karan did not. Of course, Karan could put a lot of pressure here right now with another strike. Six frame coming up. Here's a shot. He likes deep. that one. He does like that one. There's a reason. Four in a row for Henderson as we go into the seventh frame. Yep. And I'll say this. If he throws change. a strike here and make it a five-bagger, the very quiet audience behind him, I believe, is going to get a little bit louder. Oh, indeed, indeed. And that 300 potential has turned to 77. And right now, Karan is a little bit closer in the rear view. It's now only an 11-pin game going to seventh frame. It went. For, yes, it went from... 24 to now, like you said, 11. Well, if you have also noticed that uh, Karan has also Ooh. moved the speed to the right. So he was solely chasing the right, but he just made a little errant throw on this one, and he paid the ultimate price. Yeah, he was, he was, he was looking for some noise from the crowd. He got noise from the crowd, not the noise that he wanted. He's going for it all. And he's, oh, he's got, he's got to go for it all oh. at this point. doesn't get it. He's going to say one pin here at this point, no good. He's got a 140 in the seventh frame. I'm going out the door for 230, but this is a game Karan Henderson could have and probably should have had despite the fact that Andre Harrison had front five. Karan cursing himself out at this point behind us. I'm not sure how much of that got into the microphone. Probably enough to understand the flavor oh, of, never too of much. what he was chatting about. Never too much, never too much. Right now, Andre looking to take advantage of his spare. Count is all big. He would definitely like to strike here. Uh, count is good, though, and he's basically keeping it simple. And wait a minute. Oh. Oh, wow. I was he got away say, with one, that one. He got I was going to say a, a give back for a give back. Yeah, but in bowling, it's a lot about luck, too. So once they get breaks, you got to take them. Some people get them. Some people quit them. And so we're looking at... I want to say a 220 potential max out for Karan. Say Andre happens to spare out. What will that do to the psyche of the champion, and what will that do for the challenger? Well, the psyche of the champion, he's already up 2 nothing. So he's at this point where I just got to fill frames and take games. 
Karan is under so much pressure right now because, you know, the champ is striking and he's making all the spares. He's not blinking. Mm. So even when Karan was putting a couple of strikes together, he never blinked. So the real question is what Karan's going to do at this point. What is he going to do? That is the question. Oh, he said... He's, you know, he says pull out the broom, and he, may, he needs to talk life into himself. He needs to give himself CPR and not, and not try to kill himself off early. Well, when he's saying pull out the broom, I hope he's not discussing uh, what Andre Harrison may be doing to him. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm saying. No, I'm pretty sure he's talking about he's going to make a four-game walk down. Well, hopefully, hopefully that's what he means. And if I know Karan, that's exactly what he does mean. Yeah, but if Andre keeps making shots like that, it's just going to be tough to ever truly get in and take over any game. And therefore, going to be tough to win the match. Well, if he keeps doing that, the broom will be pulled out, but not the way the Karan wants it. Yeah, I, I, I feel like he's getting a little dejected on himself. He's made such good shots, and the one open sort of deflated him. Oh, sure did. I mean, look at, look, look at what he did, and again, it's... This is how, how, what do you do in the face of adversity? How do you handle it? You know, you can either figure out and redo your equipment, or you can do what he did and just throw the ball out in the Never Never Land. Mm. Waiting for a giant crocodile to eat it. Mm. Well, I feel what's happening here now, he's getting into F it, just throw it mode. And right now, I think he's... Down and in. Yeah, the rope... Down and in. He may be down down having an Ali ma mindset. The rope-a-dope is already done. Maybe he's ready to start swinging. Well, he's and hoping for that transition, and he's hoping for that, that transition to hit sooner rather than later. Well, you know... And he really needs to hit it sooner. Well, sometimes, you know, if you if you ever play video games back in the day, sometimes you just start doing Zangief moves and the Honda moves, and, it, and you start, start activating the cheese mode. <laughs> My favorite Street Fighter character, though, is Blanca, and his favorite move was biting the head of the opponent. And right now, Andre's in the middle of ripping it, off Karan's head. <laughs> pause, it. pause, 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 pause. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> Will someone please think of the children? <laughs> the children. <laughs> oh, man. And, um, well, right now, right now, um, Andre's not on pause. Oh, this, ga this game's done. Mathematical standpoint, the best that Karan can do is a 207. So what we have here is this. Situation for a little Hall of Fame situation. Shout out to Classic Walkdown. If that is to happen, that will be uh, another Classic Walkdown you'll have an opportunity to potentially see. Or you may be seeing a sweep. Either way, it is going to be a situation that one of these competitors will be thinking about on the way home. <laughs> Absolutely. And in my car, it's looking like it's going to be a good celebration. And Karan, he may be thinking about it on his way back to his house. But the idea now is to start making some good shots. You know, you can't say the match is over because as long as you have life, you got games, mm -hmm. you, you can make a comeback. So I would like to see more confidence and see him start bowling well. But also, I want to see my guy win. And well, Mike Shaw, indeed. if you're listening... He's not just a volunteer, man. He's a champion. Yeah, no, you're right. You know, he, this is his first title defense, and right now he's um, having a rather good show, to say the least. Uh, from what I saw from those last shots, uh, it could be two different perspectives. He's either throwing away shots to hurt, finish the frames, but from what I know, he's just throwing it, just trying to get a, he's just trying to get into that to that swing mode. He's he's ready to just start throwing punches, and it's the late games where Karan usually starts to strike. Absolutely. I've seen it from experience, mm -hmm. and I think he's ready to just start fighting. Either way, he's going to go down swinging. Absolutely. This match is not over. Again, it's a four-game match, best mm -hmm. of seven. you got to win four games, and total pins do not count. So every game is a new game. You're 0-0. Zero, zero. You're resetting. And he's looking to line up. Yeah. He's looking really good. Karan is looking really good on lane four. It's mm -hmm. just uh, lane three has tripped him up a couple of times. You know, it's really, he only threw two bad frames mm -hmm. that game. And you never always want to look at the score. A lot of times you want to look at the quality in which the score was shot. So right there, that was a quality 207 where he threw some shots to let himself know, hey, who am I? 
Exactly. I know who I am. Mm -hmm. Now I got to let everyone else know who I am. I'm America's most wanted for a reason. And you know what? Right now, what's wanted is sitting on this table right in front of us. If he wants it, you got to be big enough, bad enough to take it. Oh, and he's got to be a man. Is it, shoot, fight me like a man. As, you got to fight like a man because you got to win four games now. I'm sorry, fight he, like an adult. Fight like an adult. Yeah, he's, he's got to fight. <laughs> All right, well, since you talked about the walk down one game earlier and correctly predicted this situation, so what are the keys here for, for Karan Henderson in the walk down since apparently you wanted that to happen so much that you willed it into motion? Well, uh, I'll say this. Sometimes after all your adjustments, sometimes the best adjustment is no adjustment just to say effort and throw it. Sometimes you have to put yourself on autopilot, put yourself on cruise control, and just let what you naturally know take over. The primal instincts have to set in here now. You're backed into a corner. Are you going to take hits or are you going to hit back? Or in the words of fail, or in the words of Fiddler on the Roof, you're praying for transition. That's right. Transition. Uh, yes. For those musical transition. people who will understand what I meant, you'll understand what I mean. For those people that have never seen Fiddler on the Roof, you'll have no idea what in the world I am talking about. And you're going, what? I'm sure. We have a... favorite place, Fiddler. <laughs> Fiddler on the Roof. Then you know the musical. Absolutely. Which means you know the song. Yes, sir. That's right. We got class. We got class. We got class. And for the first time in this match, actually, no, the first time since game one in this match, Andre did not start off with a strike. Started with a spare game one, started with a spare here. So what I This would be the time for Mr. Henderson to actually take a lead, do something. So now, you were saying? I was saying um, something about the last score. Now, Karan mm -hmm. did finish with 207, but a lot of times you don't want to look at the score. You want to look at the quality in which the score was shot. So that was a quality 207. That was a 207 of foresight. The finish was quality. And that right there does a lot for your mental. And it actually sends a message, you know what? I finished out. I'm ready to just start throwing, throwing strikes. I'm not even going to look at the scoreboard. You don't want to always look up at the, at the frames. Sometimes the frames right there can be... Uh, like a house of mirrors. House of mirrors, it can tell many lies to yourself. Sometimes you got to just keep your head down and just charge forward. Well, to be, to be completely honest, that 207 probably should have been a game that he won. This should probably be 2-1. to one. He made, now obviously that third open that he had was the I don't care, I give up. But he definitely could have made the spare in the second frame, which he didn't. And then after the string of strikes that he did have mm -hmm. that he missed on those two if he had those two he's in the 220s and then obviously he's not going to throw that shot away you could make an argument that he could have won game three and this should be two to one yeah, yeah we have an argument i think he should have won game three you and me both yeah, yeah he, it was one that he definitely let get away and you could tell in his body reaction to it that he knew he let it get away. So you've got to stick to it. Every, every frame, you've got to be engaged. And I think he's finally focused, and he's ready to make a match of it. Well, there's four games left. Karan Henderson needs to win all four of them, or the champ retains. Starting out here, first frame, he's yelling at the ball. He's not getting the response. He's got an excuse me already. He's got a bucket. So as I shall say here, there's four games left. He's got to win all of them. The margin of error is zero. Or in the words of Jonathan Dansbury, El Chipo. Ex heavyweight champion, Jonathan Dansbury, looking to get his title back. Oh, X? Oh, I didn't know. He's an X. M yep. DMV is running. DMV, D D I was, you know, people are talking about the DMV mm. uh, trying to create their own division, and my question becomes why? You've got the belts already. I mean, we're planning to take these belts and then get our own. Yes. Oh, I mean, double, double the belts. Hardware, then more hardware. Double mint, double mint, double mint Absolutely. belts. We're green, very green. Yes. All right, Khan does make the spare in the first, leaves 3 6 10 in the second. And again, he's got a mentally, he can't let this slip away. He's got to be making the spares right now. Because he's seen for the first time Andre not starting with a strike and not Andre not going through the door. Now, if this is indeed transition and it turns into a spare match. This is where Karan can get right back into this, and he needs to because, again, the next match, the next game he loses will be the last game in the series. Yeah, no room right now. The window is pretty much, it's only cracked. Yeah. <laughs> so the it's, question is, how bad does he want it? Yeah. You know, you've got to want it more than Andre at this point. That is true. 
Fast nice shot here. That's like, ooh, I thought he had that one. 7 10. Well, the that lane, was a good shot. The lane's right now trying to help Karan. Now Karan's got to be willing to help himself. Yep. He needs to honestly just attack everything. You ever been to a no tap tournament and you end up throwing more strikes in, in a no tap? Then you do when it when when it's actual when it's actual count. Well, right now he needs to go for that that no tap mentality. Just focus on just attacking the pocket, and he may surprise himself and he may walk him down. Yeah, but also like I told the champ, you've got to stay locked in. Like mm -hmm. every game matters as well. You cannot give anything away too. Nope. As you give the opponent more breathing room, more confidence, then yours slowly, slowly fades away. So you want to take the match and end it as soon as possible. You got to have that Mamba mentality. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, it, it's the time now is around what, 11 a.m.-ish? Yes, it is. So you want to be in the road at 1130. Absolutely. If we could be on the road at 1125, that would be even better. Yeah, you do not want to be in the road at 1230. That, that is correct. No, we don't want to, it to go the distance. The sooner, the better. 1140, it's 1127 now. I would like to be on the road by 1150. Mm -hmm. See, now, me, my favorite thing, as we all know, is because people ask me all the time, who do you want to see win? I like it. For me, it doesn't matter. What I want is a game seven. Andre, at this point, does not want a game seven. Mm -hmm. Andre, neither Andre, Andre or his namesake, the last thing they want is a game seven. The best thing that they want right now is a strike, and he'll get it. Andre Harrison right now with a strike, a small two-pin advantage mm -hmm. as we go into the third frame. Exactly. Right now, he's not trying to play the role of a sunroof. He does not want to give any rays of light. Thank you, Madonna. <laughs> By the way, great song, Ray of Light, from Madonna. Yes. Great album as well. Fantastic and album, maybe. No. No. Nope. That was like in concerto right there. Uh, there's a little, little bit of harmony right now. Yeah. Or as harmonious as both of us are in terms of singing, which is not very good right now. Mm -mm. Well, what would be good is a spare, and it looks uh -oh. like he got that. No, no. it is not. <coughs> Second time that his ball has been fed to the gutter monster on the right-hand side mm. on a one-pin spare. That first one came back to haunt him. All of a sudden, he needs a oh, ball. he came up there oh, real oh. quick. And you're asking me before, how badly does he want it? That answer from how quick he went up there, he didn't set, he didn't concentrate. Let's see what he does over here. That ball's got to hurry up. Uh, that will be the answer to the question, how badly does he want it? So we're looking at now a person that's kind of dejected. We're looking at probably the end. I think that Andre is going to definitely take advantage of this and keep Before it Before he goes up there, I'm going, to, I'm going to say something, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm going to give you the mic right back. Mm -hmm. But I love my Mortal Kombat, and right now Andre can play the role of Shang Tsung and just take the soul and go... Fit. Well, let's see what happens here. If he strikes here, you're going to start seeing some soul sucking. And we are now ready to them. For mature. Done. <laughs> Finish him. Again, it's as we said, with pacing, and we start to see the result of pacing. I mean, when Quran would miss a spare, he would rush back up on and not really take his time to figure out what, where the error was made and what to do to correct that. So, you know, it's trouble. Well, Quran's already saying bring out the broom, and Quran's already throwing stuff, and that's not a good sign for Mr. Henderson. Starting strike bets. Yeah, well, he needs a strike mix right now. And Andre is looking for the fatality. Fatality. And right there is what you saw. Uh, boxing at its best. He already... <laughs> well, right there is boxing at his best. Open. Yes. Yep. No, but... Well, that, that, that's a soul crusher right there. Yeah, yeah, and, and he's going really surfaces. quick, and he's making spares. We're at the we're at the second half of game four, and if anybody had on their bingo card, Andre Harrison sweeping Karan Henderson, you're five frames away from seeing that happen. Karan finally getting a strike on the board. You got one to go. Well, let's put it this way. The best that Karan can do is a 224. Mm -hmm. However, the best that Shang Tsung over here can do is 279. Yep, 279. 
And, and, and I say that jokingly because five minutes ago we were talking about how he was basically sapping the soul from Karan Henderson, mm -hmm. complete with sound effects. I will no longer do the sound yeah, effects. Yeah, don't do sound effects no more. <laughs> but uh, I imagine somebody sucking somebody's soul from their body, and right now that's what we're having at this moment. I said soul. I didn't say anything else. I'm saying Mortal Kombat. Someone's got their mind heavily in the gutter. Always. Gordon. Well, Always. <laughs> well, and, and I'm going to segue with that. For all these unholy analogies, yeah. please remember to get your next teams month. in for unholy, ne next if month. you have it already. <laughs> unholy Alliance. I, some, of the, some of the squads are already sold out. I think there's only one squad right now that may not be sold out. <laughs> well, I'll, let me also tell you something. Yes. There is another contender, Daniel Farrer. Yes. From the DMB that's already said, see you at Unholy, Andre. Mm-hmm. Looking for five in a row here from Harrison, and he will not this time. Two pin. Well, what we've seen here is a, a masterful job of um, using your surfaces, having foresight with your surfaces. He switched to something that's a lot more, well, as powerful as well as predictable. He's going with the predictable look, and he's basically sticking with the game plan of get to the pocket, get the job done, get in the car, get something to eat, get home. There's some really nice places. Great all-you-can-eat Rodizio. If you know about Rodizio, really good one in Hackensack. One of my friends owns it. It's really good. And both Andre and Car Yeah, well, there you go. Steak night. Henderson right now. And, and right now, it's just even mathematically the game's still around. However, from an emotional standpoint, it's all over but the fighting you know, at this point. Yeah, he's going really quick. He's just throwing the ball out at this point. That was a good shot. Where was that three and a half games ago? Well, well speaking to uh, myself as a, as a former champion, I know what it's like to be in these situations. Oh, yeah. You know, I've, I've, I have a, a problem with being stubborn where, to me, if I see 3-0, I still see it 1-1, <laughs> and it, but it's, it, you know, it's his first time here. It's not going to be his last time here. I feel oh, no. Uh, Karan Henderson is way too good mm -hmm. for this to be his first and only time up here. We will see, we'll see him back. Yeah, and um, watching this is actually getting me a little intrigued about getting back on here. You should. Come on out. Hang out. Then I can talk about your bowling. Again, I should say, because I've done that many times before. Yes, you have. I've commented on your matches, and at least one of them was when you won the title. Yes, yes, yes. And I just, I definitely want to say here for Karan, you know, never let, if you look back at the video, he's going to see a lot of things that maybe he didn't see when he was up there on the lane. And whoever he has to bowl next, they're going to have to deal with and a not so Karan happy Anderson. Karan. Yeah. Well, it's 11.34 right now. I, I think you will be in the car by 11.50. And I'll just say, whoop, there it is, because this match is over. Whoop, there it is. And Sean Knight, I believe I'd like to give you the honors to do that interview, sir. Yes, I will be interviewing the reigning, defending, undisputed cruiserweight champion of the Northeast, Andre Harrison. Champ season and champ. great show of sportsmanship between the two. Karan definitely earned his way up the list. Nothing was given to him. Um, doesn't oh, feel oh, no, good to get was, swept. This, doesn't this, feel, it doesn't feel good to get swept, but this was an absolute dominant performance hmm. by Andre Harrison. He didn't let any game, no final score was within 30. The final here, Andre Harrison 233, Karan Henderson 161. Harrison wins for zip. And with the interview, Sean my face on. Uh, UBA all day. Absolutely. With the reigning, ending, very first title defense. Mr. Andre Harrison, what's going on, brother? And he stands up and he raises it. I was, I was going to say, and that would have been his last defense. <laughs> and he's out for the season. Rob Austin, that's for you. <laughs> Oh man! You so, kill me if I do it. <laughs> First title defense. Congratulations, Andre. Yes, Great sir. performance. We saw. Well, 
in my opinion, a masterful example of how to mix your surfaces up. Apparently, you didn't want to be on the road um, too late getting back to D.C. <laughs> Tell us about how, you, how it feels to defend your title for the first time. Actually feels really good. Uh, you know, this is probably the furthest I've traveled during the WCS. Everything has been pretty, pretty close. Uh, title match was at home at Riverdale. Yeah. I've been Bolarama, Westbrook, but I haven't really had a chance to really, really travel this far north and do anything. So, interesting experience. It was great. I had fun. Um, you know, just one, one frame at a time. Know your equipment. Pay attention. As is, you clearly see, I can't control my speed worth shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, yeah, um, both of y'all were chasing the speed of your feet a little bit. Yeah. Um, and it worked out because, you know, the DMV still runs strong. So we got a lot of champions yeah, out the DMV. Know. What's going on with y'all? Hashtag DMV over everybody. But, no, seriously, it's a lot of good competition in DMV, and we're, we're getting a good chance to show it right now. That's all. So that's pretty much all I got. Thank y'all, Bowler City, UBA. All of this, Gordon, my namesake, Dre Wilmot right there, making a drive with me. Uh, I see y'all at uh, Unholy. Yes, and hopefully we see you all at Unholy right now, DC Mafia. The DMV, it is what it is. They got a lot of sauce, and it ain't Mambo. So what we're going to do, we're going to sign off like that. Once again, Voice of Choice, Sean Dyface in here. Hope you enjoyed what you saw today. We got a little more coming up for you later on. You'll be A all day. You know what it is.